Hey everybody and welcome to story time today. I am glad that you could spend some time with me today. I wish I could see you in person. I really miss getting to do that. Um, so I have been reading books that kind of help you to remember and to remind you that God's love is for everyone all the time. And part of that is that we are also part of God's love and the things we do and the things we say, it's like we kind of are um, doing those things as a representation from God. So like when we speak kindly, that's spreading God's love. When we say something that isn't kind, that is not spreading God's love. So we're kind of God's hands and feet to do um, the work that needs to get done. So today I'm gonna read kind of a book that I think is just fun and cute and great. Um, but it talks about, um, it, of, about kids who maybe aren't making the best choice about how they're treating someone. And I wonder if that's something that you can relate to kind of on either end. I wonder if you've ever said something that you um, wish you hadn't said. And I wonder if you have been on the receiving end of that, that someone has said something to you that has hurt your feelings. So I'm guessing that's an experience we all have had in common. So this book is called Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hankus. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father, and she was. She was absolutely perfect. I wonder who thought you were absolutely perfect when you were born. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father, and it was Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew, and when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written in ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect and then she started school. The first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way to school. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. I wonder how you felt on your first day of school. But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. Mrs. Chud, there's Don and Eve and Lois and Al and Les and Kay and Max, Sue, Bill, Pat, Tom, Sam, Ken, Joe, Rita, Victoria, Chrysanthemum. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that Chrysanthemum's, Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said, Miss, said Mrs. Chud. Now, put your head down. I wonder how Chrysanthemum felt when that happened. I wonder how Victoria felt when she was saying it. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Hmm. I wonder how her parents felt when she heard she'd had a hard day. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and par cheesy. I wonder if you have a favorite game to play or a favorite meal. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. 
The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria, as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. Hmm. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, A chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous, jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it is absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs, kisses, and par cheesy. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of chrysanthemum's life. That sounds terrifying. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. I wonder if you have a favorite most comfortable outfit that just helps the day go a little bit better. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. <clears throat> Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen, Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger. And Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy, Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous, asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. Do you see Mrs. Twinkle? She looks pretty cool. My name is long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium. Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering chrysanthemum as a, na as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed. She ble beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Hmm, I wonder what you think about that. I wonder how that energy changed so quickly from them not liking Chrysanthemum's name to when this really cool teacher says how great it is. I wonder how things will change. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at Chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Hmm, I wonder how, the, how um, Chrysanthemum is feeling now. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. 
epilogue, which is kind of like after the story. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines as the dainty fairy queen. Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny, and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. The end. So I wonder what you think about that story. Um, I wonder if you kind of think that's fun. And I wonder if you've ever heard that before. I really love Coven Hinkus books. They're just, they tend to be really fun and I love his illustrations and I think the little mice are cute. So um, I wonder if you have ever related to something, you know, that what Chrysanthemum went through. I wonder if you've ever had that feeling. I wonder how you felt to start school. I wonder what it was like for you to start ki kindergarten. And I wonder, like Chrysanthemum, if there's something you kind of had to overcome and get through to make it so it was a place that felt good for you. So I hope you're well, and I hope that you're enjoying summer and enjoying being a kid and doing stuff like um, being outside and running in the sprinkler and, you know, just like having a good, good time. So I hope you're well, and I hope that I'll get to see you soon.